For this next demo, I'm going to use the actual image that's been provided to you in the skills practice demo. Um, I would like you to take a minute and remove the background of, or make a selection to remove the background of the image. And so what I've already done um, is I've made the background white, and so it should be very easy for you to make a selection. And based on what we already know, I would say the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool is the best option for this. And with layer one selected or layer zero selected here, I would like you to simply click and refine your tolerance. So I still have my tolerance set to 40 from the other example. And so if I delete right now, can you see that I am not making a good selection? I have more than I want. And so what I would like you to do is take a, a minute or two and I would like you to adjust, figure out the settings to make the selection that you want. So the tolerance maybe can be one because it's literally just, just, um, just white. But then also we learned about the idea of contiguous. And so right now, can you see that there is actual white in the picture that's being selected? That's because I have contiguous deselected. Contiguous means touching. And so if I deselect Command or Control D and then click the outside, I don't have to worry about it selecting part of the man. But I do have to worry about it not selecting like little pockets over here that I did want. And so I'll hold Shift and I'll click that area until I get it. When you are done, let's do this. When you are done, you're happy with your selection. You can, in theory, hit the delete key or edit cut, and it will put a hole in this layer, and it will let you see the layer beneath, which is colored green right now. And so you're basically changing the background color of your image to be green. But that's not the purpose of this skills practice. The purpose is to know that if you make a selection, oh, I have hiccups. If you make a selection and you zoom in on it, you oftentimes are not making a perfect selection. Let's zoom out so you can't see pixels. You're not making a perfect selection and sometimes you have like a little bit of a white haze on the edge or you can't do a really good job of getting it perfect and sometimes the background's not given to you as white and it's not easy to grab. And so one technique that you can use to make it look um, a little less harsh or a little more natural is before you delete your selection. So I've made a selection here of the white background and the background is active. It's important to know if you have the statue selected or the background. Um, what you can do is you can feather the edge of your selection. If you go to the select menu and modify, let me zoom in, go to the select menu and then choose modify. You can choose to add a border, smooth, expand, contract, or feather. I'm going to feather first. And so you can choose to feather your selection. When you feather, you have to make a decision about how many pixels. Now, error on the side of, of less pixels than more, you can always hit undo and redo it. Um, depending on the resolution of your image, if you did even five pixels, it might be too much. But I'll leave it at five for now to see. And basically, when I hit delete, it's going to feather where I had deleted from the edge. Now, because I had the background selected, it's going to feather from my selection back towards the feathering and what it's going to do is allow more of the original white background to show through and so that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to feather the other direction. So we'll hit step backwards and what we want to do is we want to feather so that the only thing that I see is a soft edge of stone statue. I don't want to see any white. So we'll do step backwards until we have our original selection. You can also use the window menu and history to make sure. So see how on the history panel it says feather? I want to make sure I'm back to the magic wand tool because I didn't want to have feathered. And so what you can do is you can do select and inverse. So now I have the statue. And now if I choose select, modify, and feather, we'll do five pixels again. It's feathered, but this time it's feathered from the selection, which is on the outside of the statue, back towards the statue itself. Now I still want to delete the white background. If I hit delete now, I'm deleting the statue. And so after I make that feather, I would go back to select and inverse again. Now I have the white selected again, I can hit delete. And it does a better job of not having that white halo. Now it doesn't do the best job though. If you look closely, you can still see the white halo. And so that's when we take it one step further. And so let's, I'm just gonna hit step backwards until feather on my 
history panel is selected. Now what we can do is I want to select the statue again. So I'm going to make sure that I do select inverse and actually I already had the statue so I'll do it one more time, select inverse. You need to make sure you have the statue selected and so I just want to make sure the selection goes all the way around the statue. I can see it goes down the side instead of going up into the sky. And so what you can do is instead of just feathering, which is always going to end up with a slight halo depending on how you do it, you can do contract and feather. And so we can go to the select menu, choose modify and contract. Now I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happens when you contract. And so I'm going to contract by, let's say, 10 pixels so you can see it. Watch what happens to the marching ants path. It becomes smaller. So now if I feather outward, I will only be feathering active statue. But this is way too much. I'm going to cut off a big chunk of my image if I do that. And so we'll do undo. So when you do select, modify, and contract, let's try doing four pixels. And so that comes in a significant amount. And when I feather, I'm going to feather half the amount that I contracted. So select, modify, and then feather. So instead of five pixels, I'm going to do two because it's half of what I uh, contracted. I still have the statue selected though. And if I want to delete the background, I would do select inverse. So the background is selected and then hit delete. And so now you don't see uh, that white halo anywhere. Now I, I did too much though. If we zoom in, you can see that in areas that have crisp detail around the side of his head, you've lost that detail because I've feathered too much. And well, I've actually contracted too much. And so if we go back, so I'm just going to use the history panel to go back to the magic wand tool. Um, with the statue selected, I'll do it again, but now I'll, maybe I'll cut all those values in half. So select modify. So instead of contracting four pixels, let's contract two pixels. And then select modify feather. Instead of feathering two pixels, I'll feather half, which is one. <laughs> Not that I don't think that you can do it. I just want to emphasize you should do half of whatever you contracted. Now I have the statue selected. We'll do select inverse to get the background and then delete. And so I still have a um, nice no white around the edge of the selection, but now I have more crisp detail around the edge. And as I zoom out and I look at it in real size, it doesn't look like I have a fuzzy edge. It just looks like I got rid of the background. And so you could take this a step further. So you could add a, another background to it. You could change the, the image behind it. In our case, I have used a solid fill layer. These are adjustment layers, which we will learn about in lesson 11, I want to say. And the idea of this is that it's non-destructive editing. And instead of filling a layer with green, I have created this adjustment layer. And if you click on it, you can change the color. So I could try out what does blue look like, what does pink look like, etc. If you're feeling extra bold and you don't want a solid color, you can add your own adjustment layer. And so if you go to the bottom of the layers panel and hit this little, I like to call it the black and white cookie, and those are our adjustment layers. Instead of a solid color, which is what I made, you could do a gradient. And you could choose any of the gradient options. These are kind of a little abrasive. Um, but you can, let's see. <clears throat> You can add new ones, so you could do simple, and append to adds, so you could try different options. And you could find the option that works for you. When you come back um, to the gradient fill, there's two dialog boxes, so once you choose what you want, so I chose white fading to pink, you could make it radial if you want. You can increase the size of the radial, so it's not as harsh. You could make it smaller, and you can kind of modify. Or you could just put a layer beneath it that has a picture. Okay. That wraps up how to contract and feather. You should know the pros and cons of contracting and feather by the time you're done this video. But if you were a good Photoshop student and you watched the lecture, you already know everything we talked about.